All right, friends, let's blast off into the wacky world of circles. Chapter 10. Lots of good stuff in this chapter. Um, it's pretty easy, too. And you're going to see it on SATs when you take that test in a couple of years. So I'll highlight those things as we go through. We're going to move kind of quickly because, uh, like I said, a lot of it's pretty simple. And you may even know some of it already. Um, so let's hop into 10.1, lines and segments that intersect circles. All right, so we want to just be able to recognize some things in this first section. Identify special segments, draw and identify common tangents, and then of course, here's the big one for your SATs, using the properties of tangents. So first off, definition of a circle, set of all points in a plane equidistant from a given point. So pick a point and you measure out the same distance all the way around when you connect those points, that creates a circle. All right, more uh, definitions, vocab. Of course, you know what a radius is from the center to any point on. A chord is, uh, has its endpoints on the circle, and so a diameter is always the longest chord in any circle. A secant, that might be a new word for you. A secant is a line that intersects the circle in two points. So the difference is a chord stops on the circle, whereas a secant is a line. So a chord is a segment, a secant is a line. And a tangent, same thing, a tangent is a line also. It only hits the circle once. So a tangent it just barely grazes the circle. So if you think about a circle in a plane, you can either hit the circle once, once, or twice. All right. All right. So first problem: identifying special segments and lines. Tell whether the line, ray, or segment is best described as a radius, chord, diameter, secant, or tangent. All right. So first one: AC, of course, is a radius. So you don't have to necessarily write all this stuff, but this is way more legible than my writing with this pen right now. So there you go, AC, a radius. How about part B, AB? Well, you're going all the way through, so AB is a diameter. How about DE, delta E? Well, since you are just grazing the circle, hitting it once, DE is a tangent. And a little note we have here. In this book, assume that all segments, rays, or lines that appear to be tangents are tangents. And then part D, You've got AE, and of course, AE is a secant because it hits the circle not once, but twice. All right? Okay. If I were to stop at G, then it would have been a chord, but I kept it going, so it is a secant. All right, so pause the video, try the monster progress real quick. All right, back again. In example one, what word best describes AG? And we alluded to this uh, earlier. That's a chord. And what best describes CB? That's a radius. And again, same picture. Name a tangent and a tangent segment. So you could have multiple answers here. You could have DE. You could have DB or DE for the tangent segment. All right, more vocab. Coplanar circles and common tangents. In a plane, two circles can intersect in two points, one point, or no points. So you see the pictures here. Here's two points of intersection, one point of intersection, no points of intersection. And if they have the same center, they're called concentric circles. So a lot of vocab, and should make sense, hopefully. A line or a segment that is tangent to two coplanar circles is called a common tangent. A common internal tangent intersects the segment that joins the centers of two circles. And a common external does not intersect the segment. And here's what we mean by that. So this first problem, tell how many common tangents, draw them. So in the first one, there's our common tangent. So we have two circles that are not touching. They're not intersecting at all. So you could have tangents that go, or you could have ones that crisscross. So internal tangents. All right. 
Next, B. Well, they touch the circle. Uh, they touch each other once, so that gives three common tangents. And part C, the uh, circles intersect twice, so that just gives you two common tangents. All right, see what's up with the got it, pause it. All right, monitor progress. Let's see if y'all got it. Number three, you have two internal, two external. Number four, just one external, and five, you would have no common tangents. All right. Moving along, using properties of tangents. Tangent line to a circle theorem. Now, this is the big SAT type stuff right here, my friends. I'll take a little bit more time explaining this one. In a plane, a line is tangent to a circle if and only if it's perpendicular to the radius. Oh, my gosh. Huge. Right there, that picture. You got to remember that your tangent and your radius are perpendicular. It's pretty easy to remember because it looks like it, but this theorem tells us for sure that a tangent and a radius or diameter are perpendicular. All right, and then the second theorem, external tangent congruence theorem, if you start out here at S, see you're like at the moon. See, that's the moon, and there's the Earth is the big circle P. You can draw two tangents to the Earth from the moon, right? Well, this is telling you that S to R is the same as S to T. The point of tangency where they hit has to be the same distance. So if I'm out here off a circle and I draw two tangents to it, that distance would be the same on the right and the left. So two very important theorems that you guys are going to take with you for SAT type stuff. All right, example three, verifying a tangent to a circle. Is ST tangent to circle P? Well, let's see. So we want to know if we got a right angle right there. So again, this throws it back to old, good old Pythagoras. So let's see if we've got 12 squared plus 35 squared and we want to see if that equals 37 squared. All right. So calculator time. Let's see if we got it. So I got 12 squirt plus 35 squirt. All right, 1369, and now let's go 37 squirt. Look at that, 1369. So therefore, we've got, yes, they are indeed equal, so it is a tangent. All right, fourth example, find the radius. Now this one's probably going to be the longest one for you. Bring back a little algebra one concept here with foiling. So check it out. We want to see now... Oh, wait, they tell us it's a point of tangency. Well, that's cool. So now that tells us that we have a right angle here. All right, good. So we want to set up Pythagorean theorem. So I know I got R squared plus 80 squared. Now, how am I going to represent the hypotenuse of this right triangle? Well, the radius stops right there, but then there's 50 more feet to it. So I got to represent this as R plus 50 or 50 plus R. So let me unveil here. So Pythagorean theorem. So there you go. R plus 50 squared equals R squared plus 80 squared. So you set up Pythagorean theorem. Now, what are we going to do with this quantity squared here on the left? <gasps> Gasp. Go think back to algebra. You got to foil that bad boy. First times first. Outer, inner, last. Remember that? It becomes R plus 50, R plus 50. So first times first, there's your R squared. Outer is plus is 50R. Inner, when you multiply, is 50R. Last times last is 2,500. So that's where that step is coming from. So foil that stuff. 
Now, once you got that, it's pretty cool. You're going to have uh, R squareds on both sides, so you're going to be able to cross those out. So now it's not a quadratic. It turns it back into a linear equation. Next year, you'll be full of quadratics. I kind of took it easy on you this year with the quadratics. And then uh, to cross the R's out, or R squareds out, I'm sorry, and then subtract 2,500, and then divide both sides by 100. So R is 39. And make sure it makes sense looking at your picture. You shouldn't get anything bigger than, well, I'm kind of deceiving in that one. Maybe you can't tell by the looks on that one. All right. Example five. So now this one's super easy. Again, SAT stuff. It's kind of weird if you like, if you think, man, it's so easy. But a couple years from now, SAT, you might forget. But here you are. RT is a tangent. RS is a tangent. So therefore, you know, they have to be equal. Congruent, I should say. Equal in length. All right. So all you're doing is setting them equal to each other and solving it, my friends. So that one's pretty easy. All right, a couple uh, monitor progress questions to wrap things up. So pause it here, pick it back up when you're done with those last three. All right, and here we go. So six, is that uh, tangent? Well, let's see if uh, Pythagorean theorem works. So be careful on this. Two is just this little piece out here. All right, so don't forget to add three to it. So three, four, five, darn right. Pythagorean triple. Number seven, ST is tangent, find the radius. So this is the one where we had to foil. So you should get R is seven. And then the number eight, you've got uh, set them equal to each other, X is three. So you might think like plus or minus three when you take the square root, but you know, you're representing a side length here. So, I don't know. You can just kind of stick with the positive value for it. So these are the main quiz questions from this section that I need you to remember. And it doesn't get trickier than that, my friends. You just got to remember how to do these basic things for the first section. All right? Peace!